As a member of SPE, writing technical papers will help you share your knowledge with others, thus fulfilling the SPE mission to share and disseminate technical knowledge. It will also benefit the industry, your company, and your career. However, as an engineer, writing may not be your specialty. But don't worry, we have the information you need to write a good technical paper. First, let's examine what makes a paper good. You need a concise title, a standard outline, a coherent writing style, useful data and results, and references to solid work. Although you will be referencing prior work, be sure to present new technology or information as well. Innovation is a key in having a conference program committee or journal review committee accept your paper. Another key to increasing your paper's chances with the program committee, if you're submitting a paper for presentation at a conference, is your abstract. The abstract is a concise summary of the paper topic. It should be around 350 words and should explain what makes your paper unique. Include significant new information and state your conclusions. You only have one chance to impress the committee, so catch their attention with your abstract. If you're interested in getting your paper published in an SPE journal, an additional peer review process is required. Most papers published in SPE's journals are first presented at SPE conferences, although this is not required. At the end of this presentation, we'll cover information on the process of submitting papers to SPE conferences and journals. A good paper starts with a good plan. Relate the paper to the scope of the meeting or journal and present useful information. Explain some type of methodology in your paper. Ensure that the information you provide is technically sound and use solid evidence to support your conclusions. Now, let's discuss some do's and don'ts of writing a good technical paper. Do Organize your thoughts. Compose simple sentences. Use common language. Industry terminology is fine, but steer away from company lingo. Proofread, proofread, and proofread some more. Make sure your story is technically sound. Finally, clearly show the contribution your paper will make. Don'ts include the following. Making grammatical or spelling errors. And including commercial or sales pitches. You should keep a few things in mind when planning your paper. Be sure to organize your thoughts so they flow in a coherent way. Conference paper authors should review SPE's Author Kit, where one can find a list of resources and deadlines as well as a manuscript template. Survey the existing literature. One Petro is an excellent source for papers related to your topic. And remember the ABCs, Attraction, which includes your title, abstract, conclusions, headings, and graphics, balance between technical content and writing quality, and finally, content. Include the perfect amount of detail, which should include a sufficient explanation of your methods and a practical application to your situation. Continue planning your paper by asking yourself five questions. What lesson have you learned? What should the reader understand from your work? How does your work differ from similar papers? What useful information did you derive from the literature survey? Who is your target audience? When planning and writing your paper, be sure to identify your target audience and write for them. Basic audience needs include knowing the problem or the reason you conducted the project, the solution or what you've contributed to industry knowledge, and the value or why the audience should listen to you. For example, will they make a profit from your idea or save money because of it? A basic manuscript outline is another important part of planning your conference or journal paper. In your outline, you need to lay the groundwork for your title, abstract, introduction, theory and definitions, equipment and or processes, data and results, conclusions, acknowledgments, and references. The title is the first part of your paper that people see, so make it good. You should focus the reader's attention on paper content. The title is also necessary for archived searches. It should be succinct, not too short or vague, but also not too wordy. These are some examples of good and bad titles. In the abstract, state the paper objectives and scope. Describe the methods you used. Summarize your results and state your principal conclusions. Do not use your proposal abstract. Instead, write something new that better reflects your full-length paper. In your introduction, describe your contribution. 
Clearly present the nature and scope of the problem you investigated, review the pertinent literature, and state your method of investigation and justification. The materials and methods section is necessary for both theoretical and experimental or case study papers. In theoretical papers, this section should include a hypothesis, assumptions, theoretical developments, and arguments to demonstrate applicability. In experimental or case study papers, this should include the purpose of the experiment or case study, a description of the apparatus or equipment procedures, an explanation of the data and observations, and inferences based on the data presented. The core of your paper will be the results section. Use representative data, but avoid using redundancies and too many tables and figures. As for the tables and figures themselves, do not tabulate supplementary data, lab numbers, results of simple calculations, columns showing no significant variation, or unrelated data. The grouping of data should be logical. Do not turn any of the described data into figures. Instead, graph data that show trends. Now you're finally ready to start writing your paper. You might think that you should begin at the beginning, but in fact, you need to start with the conclusion. Focus on what you've learned. It's easier to work back from the known and build the paper accordingly. Describe how you got your results and the process and methodology you used. Present the theory that explains the process. Remember to write simple sentences, use common terminology, and avoid directly promoting your company or using in-house jargon. Once you finish your first draft, you need to carefully evaluate what you've written. Is it thorough? Ask a colleague who didn't work on the project to read the paper. Then, ask a colleague who did work on the project to read it. Consider any feedback they might have on how to improve your paper. Fill in any remaining sections, except for the abstract. You'll write that once you're sure the paper is complete. An acknowledgement section isn't always necessary, but if you do include one, keep it short. After every section is complete, the editing process begins. Edit your paper several times. Any writer will tell you that the first draft is nowhere near the last. Edit for clarity. Remove any run-on sentences and spelling errors. Cut extraneous information and stick to the main topic. Ask other people to read your paper for clarity. If English isn't your first language, ask a native or fluent English speaker to read your paper and make suggestions, or use a fee-based service to help improve the quality of your written English. Ensure a balance in the clarity and technical content of your paper. Throughout the writing process, keep one thing in mind, avoiding plagiarism. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, plagiarism is the act of using another person's words or ideas without giving credit to that person. Essentially, plagiarism is stealing someone else's work. To avoid plagiarizing others, cite your sources. You might be tempted to plagiarize because you think you can't say it as well as the original author, but paraphrase in your own words in a style consistent with the rest of your work. As you're finalizing your paper, consider these tips from writing experts. Support your arguments with references. Always keep your audience in mind. Read your paper aloud to yourself to make sure it sounds smooth and consistent. Constantly ask yourself if you can improve your paper's readability. When you've finished your paper, you need to submit it through the proper channels. Follow the SPE Author Kit instructions for conference papers and use SPE's Microsoft Word template. You can include figures and tables in the manuscript or create them separately. See SPE's Prepare for a Conference and Journal Submission pages for more detailed instructions, where you can find another video detailing how to submit a paper to an SPE peer-reviewed journal. Now that we've covered the basics of writing a good technical paper, what are you waiting for? Go out there and start writing.